gamers, Herman Reuter here, back with another commentary. You may have noticed before we finally released the call we had with Slumber. Yeah, this is going to tie into that. However, before we get into the video, let's get some context since the call happened. Now, after the call happened, a few months later, a post was made by Slumber. Basically, first, they made a claim in a community post saying that I was holding on to the call. Then I briefly mentioned that post in a video on Sleepy Ra Ra. Then after, she conveniently made a community post announcing that she was gonna private the video as to disassociate with me over the MG stuff. Ah yes, let's defend the kid who befriended a doxer because Carmen Ryder bad. And during this community post, she griped about me telling her off of her I'm a minor excuse. Now you may be wondering where all this evidence is. Well, it's gone because just conveniently after I said I was going to work on the call next, she went scorched earth. Couldn't even take criticism. Oh, but for some reason, the video on me is now just unlisted as opposed to privated. Odd. Anyways, the video is titled, Riding the Karmic Wave, Carmen Rider. Now, we will be covering this video as usual, but with a twist. Now, you may remember I was citing an original script of this video in the call with her. Well, as we cover this video, we're going to be looking at the original script. So, we'll look at what she says in the video, and then we'll take a look at the script to see what she actually said. Anyways, let's get into it. What's up, gamers? Carmen Ryder here, back with another commentary. Remember when I said I'd cover Ephraim? Yeah, we're doing that today. The video is titled... Where in the world is Carmen Ryder? Yeah, I'm from that other Deke show, by the way. Anyways, let's get into it. Um... Carmen? You don't provide much context here. You do give the name of the video that you're covering, but that's about it. Did you just not watch the True Septi pause for the context or anything prior? If you did, you'd know what I'm talking about. Also, question. What AI voice thing are you using? I'm not asking this in an insulting way, by the way. I'm genuinely curious. We know literally nothing about the context of the video that you're going to be discussing out of the gate, and upon first viewing, I was really confused because I hadn't followed any of this stuff prior to your video. I actually had to go back and watch Ephraim's commentary because of said lack of context, as well as her speeding up Ephraim's video quite a lot. I do that as to not take up too much time. The video is already like 40 plus minutes, why make it longer? Also in the script you said, because you sped up the context quite a bit as well as some points, so it was hard for me to understand. Which completely contradicts what you said about me not having context. Freudian slip? Possibly. Let's hope this is the only time we have to cite Slumber script in cross-reference to her video. <laughs> Is 2023 just going to be the year of overly long self-defense commentaries where people use the dumbest arguments possible to defend actions that there's just clearly no defense for? Ah yes, how dare people defend themselves instead of staying silent and letting my side lie about them. Homegirl. It was just a rhetorical question asked to segue into the context of the video he's covering. Yeah, a rhetorical question that implied that I'm somehow not allowed to defend myself because I'm indefensible. Ring. It is a cold open at most. I'll give you that it was kind of well poisoning, sure, and Ephraim, you really shouldn't be doing that. I'd like to clarify that this shouldn't be doing that part isn't in her script, so Slumber saying that doesn't mean anything. Eight fucking hours. That is how long Carmen Ryder's most recent video is. And yes, it is a video on the Septipause drama from last year. Now, fair is fair, and Carmen does cover a lot in this video. However, wouldn't it have made more sense, especially with how long the video ended up being, to split this up into multiple videos covering only one video per commentary? Well, you see, the video was originally going to be four hours long, and end after Loon's segment. However, right after, Negokota doxed someone. Yeah, that skit where I nearly ended the video only for it to continue? That wasn't just a skit. The video really was planned to end there. What does that change about Ephraim's complaints? For that matter, what does it change, period? It means the length of the video isn't my fault, but rather Nekokota's fault for doing more stupid shit. Like, okay, that doesn't suddenly make a video being eight whole hours long any less of a problem. If I remember correctly, you were fine with Dual Tones' video being nine hours long on literally the same subject. 
Because that kind of video length is incredibly long and it can be extremely hard to clear out 8 hours in a day just to watch the damn thing. Then don't watch it in one whole day and come back later. YouTube keeps video watch timestamps saved via your history, so it's not that hard. And yes, that thumbnail is an image of Septi stabbing himself. I already explained this in the follow-up, I'm not repeating myself. On top of all of that, the thumbnail was making fun of my suicide attempt. No, it wasn't. Since the topic of the video was suicide, and you like madness combat, a new grounds thing, I referenced Nene, another new grounds thing. What would that change at all? The fact that it isn't a jab at them personally, but rather a reference to something the target should be familiar with. Though I'm not sure why we're defending a dead person who harassed CSA victims with hentai, including minors. It being a reference doesn't change that it would still be very uncomfortable for someone who attempted suicide to have to see a drawing depicted their self-depiction. By the way, the word drawing is in no part of the original paragraph. Just saying I depicted them committing an hero, as if Slumber is trying to imply I personally depicted them committing an hero rather than a drawing. I'm not going to be going over the entire video because, you know, it's eight fucking hours and I have my limits. Well, why not split it in multiple parts like you suggested? Because the problem Ephraim has is with covering an eight hour video at all. You clearly didn't have a problem with making it, but his point was that it would be much more digestible to make it into multiple parts. Or, at least, that's what I inferred the reason to be. Now, Ephraim should have elaborated on why you should have split it up. Actually, much of this comment is pretty bare bones in terms of criticism, but that's not the point. But just telling him to cover your whole video in parts doesn't make any sense because he's saying it would be extremely taxing, or at least difficult, for him to cover the whole thing. And splitting it into parts wouldn't exactly change that since it's just smaller parts of the same 8 hour hell he was trying to avoid covering in the first place. Well, if you're not gonna cover all the context, then why bother? However, I do want to address the segments on me specifically, the first of which being Carmen's criticism of my segment in Septi Paws' video on Carmen. So, let's begin! Oh no, guys, look! It's Septi's emblem! That means the video is gonna get a copyright strike! You're not funny. No, 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 no. You gotta say it like this. <clears throat> You're not funny. Hi, hello, everybody. It's me, Ephraim, and I'm here to address the next couple of points considering, well, they're about me. She did comments that show that she's still told the situation. Firstly, she's been in a video where someone effectively downplayed her actions. He didn't. His point was that angry mobs are bad. You didn't like it because he lied by omission or something. First off, Carmen, that wasn't the only point of Neko Code of Angry Mob. In fact, there was one point where I did downplay your actions by saying you merely ignored Sethi's suicidal feelings as opposed to being a factor behind their suicide attempt. That's not downplaying, that's just an objective fact. I think the thing I like most about that interjection is how there's no explanation at all, therefore making me wonder why exactly you even bothered to interject here in the first place. Because you were saying that you saying me merely ignoring Septi was downplaying when it wasn't. That still doesn't acknowledge Ephraim's problem with you failing to adequately elaborate on your point besides just stating it as though it were an objective fact and then moving on with no explanation. But that was me elaborating on the point. He asked me to elaborate, so I did. He was wondering why you bothered to interject because you just state your points and nothing more. Is that not how commentary works? <laughs> I can't read. Ah oh, yes, flashing screenshots on screen with no context. You gotta love taking the prism with that. Here, I'll show them all here so you can properly read them yourself. Oh, that's where screenshots are flashed? I thought you flashed them on the keyboard, my mistake. Also, I like how you go from getting onto Neko for saying I lied by omission and attacking Neko for not getting the context of the screenshot she's using, accusing her of lying by omission. Yeah, she did lie by omission. You didn't. Okay, this admittedly wasn't explained the best, but I was more commenting on how dismissive he sounded regarding those accusations to the point of essentially saying they're self-evidently ridiculous, only to go on and make the exact same accusations yourself. I wasn't really commenting on the validity of the accusation, I was just pointing out the irony. Then wouldn't that make your interjection useless too? I mean, you criticize me for useless interjections, meanwhile you interjected with a joke disguised as an argument. Which sounds like 90% of cinema sins if I'm being honest. Carmen, this is sarcastic, correct? That last sentence was. Because if not, you completely missed what Ephraim was saying. He was stating that he was pointing out irony, not that he was being ironic himself. Okay, then he's just a hypocrite. Those are, indeed, two different things. 
And even if he were hypothetically correct about him saying something ironically... In the script, the word right is used in place of hypothetically correct. Almost as if Slumber can't even give me a win in a non-existent example scenario because Carmen Ryder bad. Hilarious. Making a point using irony is not a useless interjection because it still has an argument behind it. Wait, didn't you just say that he wasn't being ironic? Now suddenly it was an ironic statement? Oh, and in the script, Slumber has a timestamp with 420 and she put Chee <laughs> Decide it. You're not funny. None of these proves that I drove Sophie to suicide. It doesn't prove the point at all. And the fact that you berated them just before their suicide attempt is what? An incredibly unfortunate coincidence? No. Like I said, if it wasn't me, given Sophie's temper, someone else would have been the cause. I find how you word that incredibly telling. Up until this point, I assume your argument has been that you weren't the cause, now you're saying that you were the cause, but that it doesn't matter because Septi is just crazy or something. No, my argument was, I wasn't the cause, but even if I was, they were on the verge anyways. Then that should have been stated, because given the context, you literally stated point blank that you were the cause, with no caveats. I didn't. But they and he wrote anyway, so I don't see the point in arguing this. This is backpedaling, and also that doesn't justify setting someone's suicide attempt off. I literally said I didn't. Like, has everything Septi has done just been non-existent to you? I should also note that nobody has denied Septi's mental instability. However, what everyone has argued is that you acted incredibly irresponsibly during this situation. And now you trying to brush it off as, well, somebody else would have acted irresponsibly is nothing more than pure deflection. That's not a deflection, that's just an objective fact. Even you acknowledge Septi's instability, yet somehow just brush that off, acting like they're just like everyone else. No, that definitely is a form of deflecting blame. Because you're claiming that it's not your fault or responsibility. Because it's not. Because, oh, someone else would have done it. Exactly. And Ephraim never acted like that. He outright acknowledged Sethi's instability. And even goes on to claim that nobody is denying the fact that they're unstable. Then why bother arguing a point that's already proven wrong by yourself? but then goes on to explain how he and the group that he's a part of believes that you acted irresponsibly during a period of Septi experiencing suicidal ideation. And if your argument to this is going to be that he acts like Septi is a quote-unquote normal person, then you need to explain that. Well, I have a whole playlist of reasons why Septi isn't normal, so you can look there. Even if I give you that, you still failed to adequately argue this in either your original video or your video on Ephraim, so... Honestly, I don't really care at the end of the day. This should have been something that you argued from the beginning. Well, I'm arguing it now. Oh, and in the script, Slumber accuses me of backtracking on this point. Which somehow makes even less sense given how I've been reiterating the same point over and over. To explain why Ephraim was wrong. But let's be real, this is only included because Septi has a hate boner for Ephraim. Why do they have a hate boner for Ephraim? Because I think the sole reason people think they're a communist or a dictator is because of Ephraim. Wait, people think Septi's a dictator of what country? I didn't mean literally. I meant that they have dictator-like ideologies. What the fuck is a dictator-like ideology? An oppressive ideology that believes that people shouldn't question things and should always bow down to their government slash local faceless megacorp. Um, why was this never explained in the original video? Because I shouldn't have to explain what the fuck a tanky is and why they're stupid. Actually, having gone back through and watched the initial video, you didn't make it clear at all that you weren't being literal when calling Septi a dictator. How would that not be obvious? Do you really think Septi has what it takes to run a country? We would have been living in when the wind blows in real life if that happened. There was zero indication of that being your point in the slightest. And your explanation doesn't exactly help, because if Seppi had a quote-unquote dictator-like ideology, wouldn't they want people to solely listen to them? Dictators don't work alone. Shouldn't that be obvious in a post-World War II world? Also, you never explain how Septi has this quote-unquote ideology in any of the degrees in this chain, so... L. I do literally in the next few seconds of that clip of Nego Coda didn't tell the full story. Also, you're not funny. Uh, yeah. Is that not what communist countries are? That literally doesn't debunk his argument in the slightest. 
It does, because I'm pretty sure commie leaders fall under cartoonishly authoritarian. Meanwhile, communism is an economic philosophy. Obviously, communist states can be totalitarian in nature. However, to say they're the same when you think about it is utterly nonsensical. So, countries like China, North Korea, and Russia taking advantage of their people and controlling them is just a coincidence, then? Are you going to explain how these countries exploit their citizens? Do I really need to? Do I really need to explain how a country that literally only allows propaganda media and a country that will put you in jail for mentioning a Disney character because it might hurt the leader's feelings exploits its citizens? Think about it. Do I really need to explain how North Korea exploits its citizens? Or do I really need to explain how China exploits its citizens? Or how their governments align with communism? Chinese Communist Party. Must I explain more? There has to be a reason for it. Really? That's so interesting. I thought the reason people thought I called Seppi a communist and a Nazi was because you told multiple people that I called Seppi a communist and a Nazi. Communist, yes, but Nazi, no. Well, that's utter bullshit. In Carmen's call in Senate, she was specifically asked by Lyo about the claim that Seppi is a communist and a Nazi, and she said both of those claims originated from me. She did not make the distinction she's making now. Constant grief, you're gonna have to elaborate. All right, I'm thinking about calling them a Nazi or a communist or airing their personal business in a public server? The Nazi communist stuff came from Ephraim, first off. Ephraim Josephine. <laughs> one, I was responding to the moment Lyo mentioned communism. Two, you do realize he put me in a socially tense situation having his group gang up on me in a call, right? Of course I'm not gonna give a straight answer when I'm ganged up by multiple people like that. Okay, we're gonna break this down point by point, so let's start with your first argument. One, I was responding to the moment Lyo mentioned communism. So, why exactly did you lump the claim of Nazism in on top of that? I didn't. Also, why are we citing Lyo Convoy as a source? I thought we all agreed he was a bastard who allowed the FCK stuff to happen, and that he intentionally triggered Rose's flight or fight response via her disability, and call the kids' school over petty internet shit to get him kicked out. Why are we defending Lyo Convoy at all? Don't really get a good reason for that. If you were only responding to the claim of Septi being a communist, it probably would have been better to not acknowledge the Nazi claim at all. Two, you do realize he put me in a socially cunt situation, having his group gang up on me in a call, right? Of course I'm not gonna give a straight answer when I'm ganged up by multiple people like that. That's not really an excuse. It would only explain your course of action to an extent, but it doesn't absolve you of accountability. Plus, you also don't elaborate or show how you were ganged up on. Have you actually seen anything related to the Senate, or are you still pretending that Lyo Convoy is the good guy and everyone who hates him are bad people? Again, I mean, if you really think about it, they're pretty much the same thing. Again, no, not really. Even if you break them down to their most basic assumptions, you find a lot of differences. Among them, that communism views itself as an extension of Enlightenment-era philosophy, while Nazism rejects Enlightenment-era philosophy outright. Communism views itself as a fight towards equality, while Nazism views equality as a bad goal. And I can go on. I mean, they're both flawed ideologies that got terrible people in positions of power, so... That literally does nothing to Ephraim's point about there being differences between communism and Nazism in the slightest, but go off. I never said there weren't differences. Robinson of the socialist website Current Affairs actually has a really good article going into this, while also reviewing Hitler's book Mein Kampf. Ah yes, a review of fucking Mein Kampf. My favorite nostalgia critic video. Also, a socialist website talking about communism? Totally not biased. Yep, definitely not. So glad we agree. You know, it would be such a shame if the video were to get too overcomplicated by us actually explaining our points instead of just making sarcastic little pot shots, haha. <laughs> that definitely has never happened before in the history of ever. Oh, by the way, in the script before this paragraph, Slumber unironically admits to watching Nostalgia Critic. 
Imagine unironically enjoying Nostalgia Critic. Actually thought that was a totalitarian and moral relativist and a naturalistic absolutist. Yeah, the qualities of a dictator. Wait, dictators are moral relativists? Since when, given one of the key qualities of authoritarian governance is enforcing your morality on the population, why would a relativist, somebody who believes that there is no such thing as objective morality, also view their own moral code as so objectively correct it needs to be followed by every single member of the population of their country at the point of a gun? Okay, I will admit I was confused on what moral relativist meant, but Septi doesn't even fall into that category, considering they call morals objective facts. So if anything, you disproved my point. Oh yep, because you definitely showed proof in this interjection. Totally. That totally shows the audience that this isn't just a baseless claim with no substance or anything. Even though in this section in the original video, I show Septi literally saying it being immoral is not an opinion, it's an objective fact. Therefore, current writers collected this ideology, especially for a session with a vegan and a Nazi, put together with the fact that it seems to think some people are just manipulated by more powerful forces and can't come opinions on their own, which is a minute, is far more fascist than anything Septi does. Okay, so, uh, Carmen, why is this so sped up? I already told you before, I'm not repeating myself. YouTube has a built-in speed changer. I was able to make it out after a few rewatches, but yikes. It hasn't been a giant problem throughout the duration of this video, but here it gets genuinely hard to listen to. Like, yo, genuinely cut that shit out. This isn't Friday Night Funkin'. By the way, the name drop of F and F isn't in the original script. Almost as if you had to insult something I liked in order to seem above me or whatever. I don't fucking know. Senate people don't make sense. Quote from the essay. The people who feel deprived of a clear social identity or fascism says their only privilege is the most common one, to be born in the same country. This is the origin of nationalism. Besides, the only ones who can provide an identity to the nation are its enemies. Thus, at the root of the Ur fascist psychology, there is the obsession with a plot possibly an international one, the followers must feel besieged. The easiest way to solve the plot is to appeal to xenophobia, but the plot must also come from the inside. Jews are usually the best target, because they have the advantage of being at the same time inside and outside. You see, there's a difference between fascism and recognizing someone is controlling your way of living behind the scenes. Now obviously, being bigoted isn't the answer, no. Being bigoted is what a fascist does, but just recognizing that connection and calling it out isn't fascist. I'm allowed to hate both Nazis and the rich and powerful Jews that control our way of living equally. I'm more off-putting. No, I'm more off-putting. I'm more unattractive to put in a lead role. Well, I'm a bigger box office drag. Kids, kids, you're both just awful. Carmen, are you Jewish? No. This is a genuine question. Even if you are, this joke is really tasteless, but if you're not, this comment is blatantly anti-Semitic. Even though I said I don't have a blanket hatred for Jewish people? Let me explain why. The idea of Jewish people being rich and powerful has roots in hundreds of thousands of years of the hatred of Jewish people. Nazi Germany is the overall best example of this. Last time I checked, the Germans had the literal opposite opinion of Jews. They believed they were inferior, and that the blonde, blue-eyed, Aryan race was superior. Like, that's the entire holocaust, basically. So, basically what I'm saying is, regardless of whether or not you're joking, this isn't okay to joke about. I don't abide by political correctness, fuck off. Also, doesn't Class of 09 literally have edgy jokes in it? You've used clips from that game here, and even based your Discord account on Jekka one time. Or is it only okay for your favorite game to make edgy jokes, but not me, because Carmen Writer bad? Fascism does have a long history of treating humans as little more than blank slates that are molded according to whoever can come around and manipulate them first. Because they are? Again, that's not fascist, that's just how the world works. Oh, uh, yep, because that's definitely a concept you're going to care to elaborate further on. Totally. Uh-huh. Yep. They'll definitely explain how humans are intrinsically easy to mold, and how the idea doesn't stem from fascism as opposed to just claiming that's the truth with no elaboration, explanation, or evidence. I hate to be this repetitious, but a few more words can go a very long way with your points, I promise. I literally use an example of what I meant later using Ephraim and Lyle Convoy, but okay, I guess we're just gonna be impatient. I mentioned earlier that fascism has its roots in anti-enlightenment thought, and this was also a trend that was seen in conservative arguments against the Enlightenment. I mean, I am a conservative, but I'm also Catholic. How the fuck can I be anti-enlightenment and also Catholic? 
Not to mention a lot of conservatives are Christian anyway, so there's that too. Carmen, do you know what the Enlightenment is? Enlightenment. Now. The action of enlightening or the state of being enlightened. The Enlightenment era, as defined by Google, was a European intellectual movement of the late 17th and 18th centuries emphasizing reasoning and individualism rather than tradition. It was heavily influenced by a 17th century philosopher such as Descartes, Locke, and Newton, and its prominent exponents included Kant, Goethe, Voltaire, Rousseau, and Adam Smith. That is the enlightenment Ephraim is referring to, not the action of enlightening or the state of being enlightened. Google is your friend, I promise you. Well, because Ephraim and I are Americans, and I thought he was going for the non-European American definition of enlightenment. He could have made that more clear, but he didn't. So then Ephraim talks about some weird thing that happened in France a long time ago, which I don't really care or know enough about, so I'm gonna skip ahead. Oh, so we're just gonna skip over Ephraim explaining what he meant when he referred to the Enlightenment era. Great. How... lovely. I said I didn't know enough about it, so I couldn't comment on it. I'd rather just let Ephraim have that one as opposed to trying to argue something I knew nothing about. Because you say things like this. And how you like to tell people to leave the faceless microphone alone? That's corporatism, not fascism, you f idiot. what the CCP did to Reddit. Okay, first off, the Chinese Communist Party actually bears very little resemblance to historical communism. Ah yes, the true communism hasn't been tried yet argument. It doesn't matter how little China actually resembles real communism when they are literally called the Chinese Communist Party. You might, and that's a big might, be able to argue that China doesn't fully understand communism, keyword, might, but you cannot argue that China isn't communist when they literally call themselves commies in their name. Anyone else find it funny that a trans medicalist, someone who claims that you're not trans just because you say you are and you have to meet a certain criteria, i.e. dysphoria, to be trans, also argues that you can just say you're a communist and that makes you one as opposed to having to meet certain criteria? Are you trying to somehow imply that I'm not trans because I'm a trust gun? Because that's what it sounds like. Anyways, the difference is that you can choose your political ideology, but you can't choose your identity. Whether it be trans or otherwise. Look, about six years before this story broke, the same company bought a large stake in Activision Blizzard, and famously did not turn every game that corporation made into communist propaganda. So, we're just gonna pretend that the Blitzchung controversy never happened? Carmen, explain what the fuck this is and why it's important. I fucking put it on screen, pause and read. I mean, if Sympathy is allowed to blame Edge, Agents, Tommies, Loons, and my fans' actions on me, then shouldn't I be allowed to do the same with them and you? Can you show me where Ephron condoned the blaming of those people's actions on you because of your ties to them? Oh, well, if you rewound to the actual segments that Ephron isn't featured in, you can see Septi doing that multiple times. Not to mention it's something Lyo Convoy does all the time, and even did it to Tommy as a way to dismiss his interview series. Anyway, I was originally going to continue watching until Carmen said I'm somewhat of a tech. Thanks for the discourse status, by the way. However, I can't refine that part, and I'm pretty sure it's going to add a video since then via YouTube editor. If it hasn't been, Septi will play it now. And I want to say this now, I don't exactly like Ephraim anymore. He's kind of a dick, but you didn't perfect one at all. So let me explain real quick why Carmen thinks I'm somewhat of a dick. The same day Necrocoda Angry Mob came out, that shortly after it came out, I had a Discord call in what was in the old server with Leo Convoy, Necrocoda, and Septi Fox. In it, I listened to what they had to say, critically thought it over, and changed my mind on the situation. Yeah, I don't buy that, considering how Lyo behaves himself during Drama. I'd assume it'd be impossible to think anything over when talking to him. Fascinating. Do you have an actual argument against what I said? Here's one. Earlier you said that powerful people manipulating the powerless was nothing more than a fascist belief. And now you say that Lyo, a powerful person, manipulated slash changed how you, a less powerful person, thought. You are living proof of my argument and you didn't even notice it. Okay. How is Lyo more powerful than Ephraim? Because Ephraim presumably doesn't have a server full of cocksuckers who harass and dox people they don't like, and Lyo Convoy does. The time he told me to get in a one-person car accident. Great! A screenshot we get zero context for. Keep in mind, this video I'm covering happened AFTER the call. AFTER. 
I literally explained the context to you directly in that call. Yet here you are saying I gave zero context. Just pretending the call didn't happen when I have the fucking receipts. And the fact that this guy calls the police every other day over internet drama and wonders why the police no longer help him. If I was a cop, I wouldn't help him either. Is this supposed to be a pot shot or an evidenceless claim with no substance or legs to stand on? Pot shot. I had even disagreed with him before, and when that happened, he was willing to talk things out with me. X. Do I even need to explain why I think this is bullshit? Um, yeah, you kinda do. Okay, well, his behavior during all the times he's been called out is telling, and it gives me a reason to not believe this at face value. And then I was told, and I could not make this up if I tried, that Hitler killed himself because he felt very, very bad for killing all those Jews. The reason I brought that up was because Coda's excuse for political violence was the Holocaust wasn't solved with hugs and kisses. Which I pointed out that it was Hitler killing himself that caused the war to end. So did the entire Pacific Theater just not happen then? I mean, they didn't exactly teach me then, high school. Yeah, so Ephraim bringing it up was useful because of his information you hadn't considered due to ignorance. How exactly is the school system failing me considered ignorance? Also, Ephraim doesn't exactly explain this moment in history, so I'm inclined to believe it didn't happen. Let's start with the most noticeable issue. The thumbnail for the video sees Nekokota being raped. Carmen has explicitly said that is what this thumbnail is supposed to be. She even defended it at the end of her video. Oh, and if you're gonna get mad over the thumbnail, Sucky made rape joke memes involving me and Kona as well, so yeah, don't be a hit. Was showing that last part supposed to prove a point? If anything, you made yourself look like a hypocrite. But hey, at least you defended the person who blackmails and dox his children. Okay, a couple things. First off, I played that clip just to prove that you said what I had mentioned you would claim. It was for the sake of context above all else. I then go on to explain my issue with this line of reasoning immediately after I cut back to myself. As for the point about how I defended Nekokuna, who also did some bad things, again, that's totally irrelevant. What she did was doxing. Why would you want to defend a doxer at all? Because doxers can still be victims of heinous things, and making light of said things is incredibly irresponsible and disrespectful to their status as victim of said heinous crimes. It's not rocket science, I don't get what your fucking point is. I already explained this in the call I had with you. Stop pretending it doesn't exist. I wish to remind you all that Neko Koda is a victim of rape. Carmen, and I really do mean this, the fuck is wrong with you? I didn't do it because of me, Omega. I did it to tie into the meme of me already wanting to fuck her. As stated earlier. When did I say you did it because of the Omega? I just said you did this, and that Coda is a victim of rape. You didn't say it, but you implied it. Where? The Omega wasn't even mentioned until you brought him up, Carmen. Oh well, if you actually watch the non Ephron parts of the video, at some point, I show comments that link the thumbnail to the claim of me defending the Omega. Which is something that never fucking happened. Also, let's not forget the person you're defending did the same thing that you're getting on me for to me. But I guess it's okay for Septi to do it, just not me. Um, no, it's not in any way okay for Septi to do it, and in fact, when I found out that Septi did it, I not only cut them off- Wait, wait, wait. You cut Septi off, but are still defending them. Uh, why? See my prior interjection on the defense of Nekokoda, but apply it to Septi instead. And you can go listen to what I told you in the call again. Her defense, I should note, doesn't even make any sense of comparison because Septi was doing it for the sake of a meme while Carmen was just depicting it. We both did it for a meme. Yeah, I firmly believe this is a post hoc justification you made up after the fact. Between the various screenshots we have where you never try and tie it into the meme of you wanting to fuck Coda. Because I thought that would be obvious. Well, it clearly wasn't. It might not be to you and Ephraim, but if people actually saw the Communist Creeper video, they'd get the joke. Anywho, after the April Fool's video I made, Edge got these DMs from Fractured Light. Pause and read if you like, but turns out that Ephraim's sexual harassment got him booted from the server space Guru 5 mentioned in those tweets. And Fractured Light was the one who actually got them to keep things under wraps. I'm not sure why you'd want to keep it under wraps, but either way, I cannot in good faith let this go unexposed. This is just gonna be an explanation from someone who has also been sexually harassed. Sexual harassment can be a really traumatizing experience. It can make a victim ashamed or embarrassed, and many victims blame themselves or don't have the courage to speak out. Okay, but that doesn't erase the fact that you need to speak out so this person doesn't hurt someone else the same way. Although, from having read the screenshots you yourself provided, Light outright explains that this is because he doesn't view Ephraim as a threat. Okay, but just because you don't view him as a threat, that doesn't mean they objectively aren't. Reading our own evidence, please. Thanks. 
So after this, Carmen goes on to do a number of things in the last bit of her video. She, in order, brings up unrelated cases of sexual misconduct to prove a point about how everyone who commits sex crimes will inevitably do it again. Because they will. Devolves into fear mongering about how Ephraim will sexually harass one again at some point. How is me pointing out potential future sexual misconduct fear mongering? Yeah, guys, that Dan Schneider documentary, that, that's just fear mongering. You know, Dan won't do it again. He's sorry. Makes an entirely unnecessary note about how she doesn't like Fracture Light, but how nobody deserves harassment. Because I don't like him, but he doesn't deserve harassment. Randomly brings up Coyote Lovely and how Raven Pine supports him for no discernible reason and without proving that Raven supports him. Raven Pines used a clip from him in her video on me. And tried to paint the people who cited against her, or in her words, with Lyo and Septi as pedo supporters and transphobes. Septi pitched down my voice and dead named me multiple times. And Lyo Convoy chose to defend Peaches even after the SEK stuff came out. So I'm done covering Carmen for now. I suppose I should move on to my final thoughts. Look, I don't want to keep repeating myself, so I want to bring up one last thing to address before I go. Why are your title and thumbnail about Ephraim's sexual harassment of light if you were only going to talk about it for three fucking minutes? Because I wanted to cover his video first instead of just dismissing the argument. Anyways, I was gonna end it here, but a few things happened in the process of making this video. You know, Slumber, for someone who hates me, you sure do like harassing people on my behalf in comments. Even after Asher and I openly told people to stop doing so. Why do I mention this? Well, to get people to stop harassing Kirito, as both I and Asher have since realized he was manipulated by Septi into doing the stupid shit he did, as said in the Sleepy Raw Raw video. And two, because Slumber just magically decided that now is the time to do a video on my follow-up. Yeah, she just coincidentally came out of self-loathing and pretending to be sad to shit on me. You know, just a, just a coincidence, totally not because now that the call is out, she's getting backlashed and is screwed. Yeah, totally a coincidence. You're screwed. Yeah, you're totally screwed. No. You're screwed. <laughs> you're screwed. Oh, and don't worry. I download the script for that, too, and we'll cover it when it comes out. Anyways, gamers, have a good night. So am I. So am I. So am I.